with uh, uh, Professor Bernd Feuerbacher, who is the current president of the IF, and we're at the uh, Federation offices in Paris. You've recently become president, and I'd just like to ask you uh, what the IF president does. That's a good question. <laughs> I've been asking myself that question. Um, anyway, uh, the IAF is a very, very big organization. It has thousands of volunteers all over the world working for it in various uh, structures. It has a very um, active and uh, professional secretariat in Paris, where I'm presently. And uh, the role of the president is to keep all this together, keep the strings, and uh, keep the thing working. That's the way I see it. Has it been a particular challenge? How, how has it been? You've been president now for three months, four months. Yes. So, yes. so what um, have been the highlights so far? It's it's a challenge in any case, uh, but the the real nice thing about it is working together with so many uh, high level and highly motivated people. Very very professional environment. Um, everything about space is here in IAF, and that's a lot of fun. Excellent. So, uh, how did you become president? What's your background? I'm a, I'm a scientist, uh, which is uh, in this function a little bit unusual. Um, I started uh, with ESA in the space science department. Actually, I was involved in early uh, experiments on lunar dust from the Apollo missions. Uh, I worked a lot in microgravity, material science. And um, the latest uh, thing I did is um, a little machine called Philae, which is presently on its way to a comet um, called triumov gerasimenko and it will be detached from the Rosetta mission after the rendezvous in 2014 and land actually on the comet. And that's a very exciting and very unique mission. Do you feel sad to have left that life behind, or...? I'm not leaving it behind. Right. <laughs> Definitely not. No, I'm, I'm still following up uh, very um, keen the, uh, the Rosetta mission. I'm active in various things in um, science, and uh, I'm writing books and, and things like that. So I think I'm still in there, and I'm uh, using this environment here for uh, an additional stimulation. Excellent. So how do you see the, your job progressing as I am president over the next uh, few years? This year, we're actually having our 60s Congress uh, of IAF, which is quite a way, and uh, IAF has come quite a long way from an institution to run a single Congress a year. Now it is a communication organization working globally uh, doing networking in the space field uh, all over the world. It's uh, really bringing together people and ideas. I think the main functions that I would like to uh, emphasize is actually in two areas. Uh, one is uh, we now have about 200 members, institutional members, out of 60 countries. Uh, this we should um, uh, enlarge. Uh, in particular, we would like to put some more emphasis on the upcoming emerging space nations. For example, we will be holding a congress in Africa, in South Africa, in two years from now. and. Um, that's uh, one of the things where we, where we try to expand. The other thing is uh, we would like to emphasize our work with the young generation. Um, the Glasgow Congress last year, uh, we had about a third of all participants below the age of 30. Uh, that's a great success. Uh, we are now in a situation where more and more young people get enthused by space and uh, they're getting active in this organization and we will try to emphasize that in the future. And it's quite a changing industry really at the moment with uh, all these missions going back to the moon and Mars perhaps and the 
private space tourism fields. Do you see those as particular challenges? Oh yes, uh, it's uh, already very well integrated into the Federation. We have uh, members uh, from the field of space tourism, from the new commercial areas, uh, from the area of exploration. And I think this is what really will bring space in the future into a very, very lively situation. Um, exploration is something that will stimulate uh, people in a similar way as maybe the lunar missions, the uh, uh, Apollo missions did for two generations earlier. Uh, they're just celebrating their 40th anniversary uh, in this year of the first uh, lunar landings. Uh, this is uh, an event that most of us still remember very lively and so I think um, in the future if we have missions to the moon again and maybe to Mars that will have a similar stimulating effect on the young people and all generations in fact. Thank you Dr. Feuerbacher. You're most welcome.